All right, time to shoot the other. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Silence! There's no time. I'm time traveling hat guy. Someone let you use a. T I already said there's no time, you fool. Listen, the Leafs just lost in the 2013 playoffs. They think they were actually close to beating Boston. They're heading into the 2013 summer. They're about to make some huge mistakes. <laughs> Tell me about it. Why don't you seem bothered by all this? Well, yeah, I mean, there was a little bit of suffering, as, as I guess you know, but in, in 2017, things are actually much better. I, I, I guess you haven't seen it yet. Things are getting better? Oh! Oh my goodness, that's such a relief. It's a step up for sure, big change. It's so good to hear that the days are finally gone where the Leafs are getting outshot every night, getting their teeth kicked in possession-wise, but riding a hot shooting percentage and amazing goaltending en route to wins that might be masking some more serious problems. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, let me see that time machine real quick. Hi! Leafs Nation did witness Bronx and Lucas! Why do I watch hockey? Stressfully, mostly. Are you in? Iggy's at the vet while I'm shooting this, so victory, Charlie! Iggy's fine, don't worry. Leafs win! I mean, pretty much. 5-4 against the Carolina Hurricanes. I mean, if nothing else, they're fun. Nearly blowing a 3-0, 4-1, and 5-2 lead kind of fun! Look, after the game, Babcock said, you know, Kenny Holland used to look at these games and say uh, they'll look like a Picasso in the morning when you look at the standings. This victory looks like a bunch of crayon scribbles and macaroni and glue smushed onto construction paper and hung on the fridge, but, uh, I, mean, I mean, yeah, you're right, two points. Look, we're not gonna go too long with this one, and I mean it this time. I know that I never seem to mean that anymore, but I do. The Leafs play the Washington Capitals on the second half of a back-to-back -back hockey night in Canada, and that's only coming up in a few hours, and I, I, I think I'd like you to watch this video before that game goes up. It just so happens that the Leafs and Hurricanes combined for nine goals, so we're not gonna go through all those specifically. Let's focus on the positives. Asim Kadri's point streak increases to nine games. Nas! Babcock loses his mind in the morning and decides to make Matt Martin a healthy scratch. The, the fourth line, I think, is Marlowe between Levo and Brown. What? And by loses his mind, I mean loses it in the best way possible. Or so it seemed in the morning. But at the very least, Josh Levo rewards him by scoring a goal. A reward, because Cam. Which brings me to the other bit of good news. Uh, the Hurricanes decided to play Cam Ward. And I looked at his stats coming into the game. I'm like, oh. And then after the first two goals, the Leafs scored. I'm like, there he is. And Freddie Anderson, despite letting in a stinker at the end, was the Leafs' backbone. And he certainly bent, but he did not break. So... I'm confused. Maybe it's just that the Carolina Hurricanes are incredible, and Hurricanes fans, if I were you, I think I already said this, but I'd be excited about your team. Ignore the standings. They're young, they're exciting, they got no quit, which you saw in this game, and they really, really give the Leafs problems. They kick their ass in the first game on the road for the Hurricanes, and then they owned them in this one, and they got beat by better goaltending. That was, that was the long and short of it. Leafs played their starter, he was good. Hurricanes played their backup, he was bad. It's that simple. Tough pill to swallow. You never want to lose any game, especially in regulation, but I'd be cool about it if I were you. That's not true. I'd be yelling and screaming. That's kind of my thing. But I'm confused. So Babcock keeps saying over and over and over again, we didn't get Patty to play in the middle. And I kind of wish he would stop saying it because he keeps playing Patty in the middle. That's like your teacher going, you know, I didn't assign this homework to give you more work. Oh, does that mean I don't have to do it? Oh God, no, you still have to do it. Thanks. All right, here's your math homework. You're my English teacher. Look, I know I didn't get you as a student to give you math homework, but basically what Babcock said, is, well, you know, Carolina's a really good team and Florida's a really good team and because the Leafs are going to be in their barn and those teams have home ice advantage, he wants to match up against them better and so he uses Marlowe to do that. I don't blame him for doing that. I, I think that is the right decision. But at the same time, isn't that just essentially going, well, you know, Dominic Moore's kind of bad. See, the other team is going to be able to put their good players out there, and then I'm going to be stuck with, a like, a bad player, and I don't want that. I mean, come on, how else am I supposed to read that? Babcock is explaining his strategy like it's so academic and hard to understand. No, I get it. You're putting out your better players, so you're basically saying more stinks. I understand the method to Babcock's madness, and the truth is, his madness is not madness at all. It's brilliant. What is mad, however, is that despite these changes, despite the fact that their lines, one, two, three, four, contend with any 12-man forward group in the entire Higher NHL, they have stunk lately. But Steve, they're winning games. I've heard that before. Stop looking at me like the smarmy politician from every natural disaster movie. My model works. I have done the research. I have done the work. I've run the test a thousand times, Mr. Vice President. But they're winning all kinds of games. Look at them in the standings. You expect me to cause panic amidst all this victory? There won't be any victory unless we act now, don't you understand? I don't have time for this. Take him away. If you just listen to 
to me. Listen, their first periods are inadequate and they're coursing forward. Get your hands off of me! It's hard not to feel like that as of late. I've had some people say to me, look, Steve, can't you just be happy? Look at the Leafs in the standings. Why can't I completely just relax? Have you never been hurt before? So why can't I completely just relax about the Leafs' relatively amazing record as of late? If I had to address the team directly, I would say, you remind me of a team that I once knew. I see their face whenever I, I look at you. You wouldn't believe all of the things Carlisle put me through. This is why I just can't get with Lou. And here I was thinking that the Leafs ushered in a new era. But the thing is, I do believe in the things Lou is doing. What the hell is going on? And then I checked my phone. Connor Carrick, Nikita Soshnikov, and Josh Levo, who scored a goal last night, are going to be out against Washington. And Dominic Moore, Matt Martin, and Robin Polak are going to be in. And I assume Curtis McElhinney plays the second half of the back-to-back. -back. Maybe we'll know an answer by the time this video is even posted. And you know what that means? I don't know. Probably a 7-1 Leafs victory. I don't get it! Now, I know I seem like I don't have a very level head right now, but I am going to have a level head about something. Josh Levo. So, he scored last night. He's a scratch tonight. Babcock keeps saying, well, he's got to take someone's job and he's got to play even harder and bloody blow. Over his entire NHL career, Josh Levo has 20 points in 47 games. Spread that over an 82 game season, that is a 34 point pace. But if you combine his stats from last season with this season, he has 12 points in 19 games. He's on pace for 13 goals and 39 assists. So he is on pace for somewhere between 51 and 52 points. And considering he just signed a 920 $25,000 contract, I will take that kind of play for that kind of money. I'll take a 34 point pay, sure, at 52? Yes, please! To be honest, if I could, I'd probably put him in the lineup every night. Especially with Nikita Soshnikov being on the ice for four or five shots attempts against for everyone four so far, but I expect that to improve. But I am not gonna jump on board the free vote train. I used to be on the free vote train. I used to scream, free Josh Levo! He put up 10 points in 12 games, what do you want? And like I said, I would have him in the lineup, but I will feel bad for Josh Levo when Josh Levo feels bad for Josh Levo. I don't think he does. Chris Johnson came on my podcast a few months ago and he was talking about Josh Levo trade talks with the Leafs and their ask for him was astronomically high. Then they had contract talks with him for an extension. This contract doesn't kick in until next year and Levo signed the thing. And after the game, I mean, he scored a goal, the Leafs won, he was all smiles. No one's forcing Levo to put up with this. Maybe the guy just likes it here. We saw with the examples last year of two players who I actually really liked in Peter Hall and Frank Corrado, they weren't as willing to put up with this as Levo seems to be. They were mostly quiet, and then I think Corrado said something a little later on, but Josh Levo? When I saw that interview, I barely remembered what his voice sounded like. And you saw him on the ice, that big celebration when he scored right in Nas's face? When Matthew set up Marlowe, Levo was the guy looking at Matthews like, I'm so glad he's on my team. You know what? The guy seems to be having a good time. Look, if a player is being treated unfairly, you should stick up for him. But Josh Levo doesn't seem to think that he's being treated unfairly. So despite all the things that I am not chill about, I'm gonna choose to be chill about this. One more interesting note. Check out this tweet from the Cap Friendly Twitter account. Because Sash has played three games with the Leafs this season, he's no longer waiver exempt. Which means between the likes of Levo and Sash and Moore, and we can even throw Matt Martin in there, none of the Leafs spare forwards can be sent down without having to go through waivers. So all the Leafs lines have been put into chaos and a blender as of late, but this seems to be a sign of more stability to come. That or a trade. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends that I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube and follow me on Instagram. Uh, it's just Steve Dangle, all one word. My stories have that new thing where you can swipe up and click on links and stuff. I, I finally figured out how to do that. I'm smart. And it, I, have, I have a smarter wife. That, that's how. That's how.